How you doing, people? We got one last movie from 2022 to make up for, and that is All Quiet on the Western Front. Directed by Edward Berger and starring Felix Kammerer and Daniel Bruhl. Kammerer plays Paul, a young man who enlists in the German army during World War I. Initially, he's quite enamored with the idea of doing his service to the Fatherland, but he quickly realizes the Fatherland gives not one iota of a shit about him, and he and his fellow soldiers are just expendable pawns in a game played by powerful assholes. I imagine most of you probably don't need a plot summary for All Quiet on the Western Front, but there it is. It is, of course, based on the famous novel of the same name by Eric Maria Remarque, which was based on his own experience in World War I. It's a book I originally read way back in the 90s during my high school days. God, I'm old. And if All Quiet does not clearly illustrate to you the futility of war, nothing will. And fun fact, when the Nazis took over Germany, they declared his book unpatriotic and banned it. And if authoritarian asshats are telling you a book is bad and you should not read it, that is a sign that you definitely should read it. But thankfully, nothing like that would ever happen in today's world. Of course, this is not the first time All Quiet has been adapted to the big screen. The first time was way back in 1930, and that movie won Best Picture. And there was a made-for-TV version in 1979, which was pretty good in its own right. And the latest version is the first time we've had a truly German production of the film. It's a mostly German cast and crew, although I think Kammerer is Austrian, and is presented in the German language, though there is an English dub on Netflix if you prefer. And it's very much a people examining a very dark period in their own history, which is never easy but often necessary. Those who do not learn from history, after all. And clearly it's very difficult to make a bad adaptation of All Quiet because we're three for three, this is great. They did make a few minor changes to the novel and the previous adaptations, which is fine. There's no point in telling the exact same story for a fourth time. The original story was entirely told in first person from Paul's point of view. This time, we actually see some of the political machinations going on behind the scenes away from the front. Those scenes involve Matthias Erzberger, played by Daniel Bruhl, who is the man who ultimately signed the armistice that ended the war. And it was kind of interesting to see their desperation to end this horrible war because they realized the death toll has already hit ridiculous numbers, and if they keep this up, they're just going to add more bodies onto the pile. And there are a few parts of the story that are omitted in this version. In the original story, the boys had a teacher, Professor Kantarek, who is the one who really convinced them to enlist and do their service for the fatherland and all that, and he is not in this version at all. We do see a very brief scene of the boy's pre-enlistment where one of them is forging his father's signature on his enlistment papers because he's too young to enlist on his own, which does show how seriously they took it and how badly they wanted to enlist. We don't really see how they were indoctrinated, which I suppose is not really the point that the movie is trying to drive home. What the movie is trying to tell us is just how horrible war can be, and it does that. We also don't see Paul's brief return home when he's wounded, and he sees just how clueless everyone back home is about what's really going on at the front. And that was a part of the story that really stuck in my memory, and I was a little disappointed to not see it here. But despite those changes, it is still very true to Remark's message about the futility of war. These men were fighting each other in the trenches for years with very little movement in either direction, and for what? And it does an excellent job of showing just how quickly Paul's enthusiasm for enlisting just evaporates. He joins the army with the hopes of becoming a hero, but almost as soon as he gets to the front, it's just a fight to survive. It also makes it abundantly clear just how little those in power cared about those soldiers. When we see the boys enlisting, one of them is given the uniform of a soldier who has already died, and they just repurposed his uniform and sewed up the bullet holes, and unfortunately, they forgot to take the poor guy's name tag off. And when he points out, hey, this has someone else's name on it, the guy does not miss a beat. He's just like, oh, this was probably handed out to someone else, but it didn't fit him. Happens all the time. Here you go. Fuck you, you soulless bastard. Even as the war is about to end, the asshole German commander is like, no, no, we can't end it like this. We need one last German victory. So we're going to charge at 10.45 a.m., 15 minutes before the armistice goes into effect. And what does this accomplish? Not a goddamn thing. Pointless. Not being German myself, I don't know a whole lot about these actors, except for Daniel Bruhl, who I know from the MCU. He was pretty much the only one I recognized, but they all did an excellent job. And it's really heart-wrenching to see all these young men so happy and full of life have to go through the horrors of any war, let alone the war to end all wars. If only. 
And Berger does a brilliant job of bringing the Western Front to life. It is nasty, dirty, bloody, just a downright horrifying experience. This is the feel-bad movie of the year. One scene that really sticks out, and it's a moment from the novel that they did not remove from the movie, is the scene where Paul stabs some French soldier and the guy just takes forever to die and they're stuck in a trench and Paul just has to sit there and watch this guy slowly die and it is as unsettling as it sounds. So yeah, this was probably the most sobering movie of 2022. I feel a bit weird about recommending this because I certainly would not say it's an enjoyable movie. It's not meant to be enjoyable. If you do find it enjoyable, there's something wrong with you. But it is incredibly well made and does a great job of conveying its message. And as I am recording this, the Oscar nominations have come out, and this could very well be the second adaptation of All Quiet to win Best Picture. It is on Netflix and well worth a watch, but you may want to have a palate cleanser on standby. And Glass Onion is also on Netflix, so there you go. And that's all I have to say about All Quiet on the Western Front. Till next time, take care.